All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachach Chodash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War. Back at you again with another lesson. And uh, as always, I pray Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. He allow these lessons to be edifying to those of the whole four elect. And uh, Lord's willing, I'm going to strive to uh, keep it straight on the topic which is the topic of this video is vanity. All right, vanity, vanity. Okay, now let me just look up the word vanity here in the dictionary, a little simple dictionary of Collins English. It says, if you refer to someone's vanity, you are critical of them because they take great pride in their appearance or abilities, disapproval. All right, okay, it says, Okay, right. Let's read it again. If you refer to someone's vanity, you are critical of them because they take great pride in their appearance and abilities. You know, when man takes great pride in the wealth in which he has, it's vanity. You know, why is it vanity? Because he is not going to have it forever. All right. It's not yours forever. You know, like as a. Uh, you know, what King Solomon has said also was that everything under the sun is vanity. All right. And we don't take every we don't take things with us when we go back to the spirit realm with Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai and the angels. All right. So really everything in this existence and this present life and this sinful flesh that we live in is vanity. You know, so uh, scriptures say also come to mind is uh, uh, everything is temporal, you know. It's temporal. You know, everything that we have here is, is temporary, you know, but what's not temporary is the word of the Lord. All right. And the work that we put in, because remember, the scriptures say the Lord is not forgetful of our labor of love. All right. He's not forgetful of our works. You know, it tells you in the um, second edges nine uh, in that chapter, it tells you how to, uh, you know, what uh, that's our works as part of us getting saved. It proves our faith. All right. in the Lord, you know, and it's a part of being saved because Apostle Paul said faith without works is dead. So to prove your faith, you must have works. So anyway, let's read this uh, scripture here. Psalms 39 and five. Behold, thou has made my days as a hand breath and my age is as nothing before thee. Verily. Every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Shalai. All right. And that's so true. You know, you know, everything that you have here is really is not yours forever. OK. Now, when we look up this word hand breath, let's see what it means. OK, the word hand breath. All right. The Hebrew word is da pa cha. So the pach. The pach, all right. It says span width of the hand, hand breadth, a unit of measurement, measurement of length. Copying an architectural term, it says hand breadth copying. All right. Now in the Strong's definition, it says a spread of the hand, a palm breadth, not span of the fingers. Architecturally. A carbol as a supporting palm, copying hand breath. All right, which hand breath means measurement. But let's read here in the lexicon. It says, properly, the open hand, the palm, in all its occurrences, used as a measure of four fingers. Now, when we read, they got a few precepts here. Hand breath, 1 Kings 7.26, 2 Chronicles 4 and 5. Jeremiah 52 and 21, Psalms 39 and 6. It says, Behold, thou hast made my days as hand breaths very short. Okay, so the word hand breath means measurements. In this particular case, is very short. All right. All right, so that's what it means. It's measurement. So it's very short. We live a short life. So let's read it again. Behold. Thou has made my days as a hand breath. All right, which is very short measurement of time. 
You know, we're on a time limit when we're put here in the flesh. And that's why it's important for us who are called in the truth, you know, to, to do to do the job. All right. We're set here in the earth. All right. To do a job. All right. For those who have been called. All right. And that job is to give our reasonable service. And what is our reasonable service to give our bodies as a living sacrifice? Now, giving our bodies as a living sacrifice, it starts with, you know, coming out of the world which is uh, by the renewing of the mind and being washed by the word repentance. Okay. You know, you don't no longer live for the world. You live for your how about Shimei I was shy, you know, meaning you live more in the spirit than you do of the flesh. Okay. And then ultimately, of course, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, brother have to be put to death for this truth. Then so be, all right. Yahweh Shai said the servant is no greater than his master, roughly paraphrasing. So it says, behold, Thou has made my days as a hand breath, and my age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. You see, you know, you, you could be in your youth. You could have, you know, a fit body. You know, you, you don't have problems with infirmities yet. All right. Your bones don't ache, you know, and um, your metabolism is running at its proper course. <laughs> you know, metabolism the speed is sped up. You know, you can eat whatever you kind of want. You don't put on weight. You know, it's vanity. It's still vanity. You know, everything that we possess, cars, clothes, you know, is is vanity. All right. That's why uh Yahweh Shai told the disciples, whatever we shall lose, we shall reap a hundredfold. All right. So, or is it tenfold or a hundredfold? I believe it's a hundredfold, if I'm not mistaken. I'll leave the precept in the post production so now let's go into the word vanity in the strongs okay we read what simple definition was in the collins english of vanity now let's see what the blue letter says about vanity now this hebrew word is habala habala all right habal okay um vapor breath breath vapor vanity vainly uh vanity vain altogether Strong's definition, habal, emptiness or vanity, figuratively something transitory, unsatisfactory, unsatisfactory. All right, because it's not good enough. You know, no matter what we have, what we possess, it's not good enough. All right, it could be better. And that's why Yahweh Shai, all right, when he bring the kingdom and healing in his wings and recovering the remnant of his elect, all right, and give us salvation, those of the whole four elect, we're going to be made perfect. So everything that we have is going to be satisfying. All right, nothing is going to be vanity anymore. So, yeah, something transitory and unsatisfactory. Okay, these bodies are unsatis unsatisfactory. All right, not good enough. It's not good enough. Often used as an adverb, altogether vain vanity. All right. So remember, emptiness or vanity. OK, in the lexicon, it gives us breath, breathing. Use of a gentle breeze. Isaiah 57, 13. It says more often use of the breath of the mouth. All right. I wanted to read the word vanity from the etymology as well. And um, vanity, it says. That which is vain, futile, or worthless from the old French vanite, self-conceit, futility, lack of resolve. It says emptiness, aimlessness, falsity, figuratively, vainglory, foolish pride. It says vaness, empty, well from vaness, empty, void, figuratively, idle, fruitless. It says, uh, to leave, abandon, give out, meaning self-conceited. Okay, so vanity is uh, worthless, okay? Worthless, vainglory, foolish, and pride. Empty, void, fruitless, falsity, all right? Emptiness, aimlessness. 
self-conceited. Okay. All right. So let's get back. It says uh, vanity, emptiness. You know, so vanity is really emptiness. And it's nothing. You know, it's really meaningless. And what's not meaningless, all right, is us serving the Lord. You know, that's what is uh, credible. Uh, the scriptures say, uh, uh, store thou treasures uh, uh, in heaven and not on earth. All right. Another scripture say where man's... Uh, uh, treasure is that's where his heart will be also you know so it's not vanity to serve Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai it's actually beneficial you know serving the Lord it's like the herbs you know that, that we use to heal the body because herbs are side benefits you know but the flesh is sort of like you know you know uh, medicine chemical medicine that Esau gives you because it comes with side effects but Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai comes with side benefits. And it's going to benefit us in the next world to come, which is coming soon. And that's through Yahweh Shai. So, yes, we worship Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. We worship Yahweh Shai. That's the deliverer. That's our savior. Okay. That's, that's, our, that's our big brother. All right. Who's come to deliver us, to save us from, from the wicked. All right. You know, Apostle, Elder Apostle Tahar coined this year, the year of hasten. Unto the coming of our Lord, meaning we're hasting and praying for Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, to speed up the days for the elect's sake and to recover the remnant of his elect. All right, so that we no longer live in vanity. You know, I don't know if I said it already, but even King Solomon said, you know, everything under the sun is uh, vanity. You know, and uh, through Yahweh Shai and the kingdom to come, which will be on earth as it is in heaven. OK, we're not going to live in vanity. We're going to live a full life. We're going to live forever. You know, I'm thinking about also uh, Jude, how um, we are placed in the chains of darkness. All right. Which is these bodies. We're trapped in sinful flesh until Yahweh Shai changes. And that's by the way of his his coming and activating the new covenant. All right. So let's read the scripture again. Psalms 39 and 5. Behold. Thou hast made my days as a hand breath, and my age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Shalai. See that? So really, we're understanding, you know, we know that everything here is vanity. So to live for the world is stupid because you're going to lose it anyway. Everything that you have, once you're gone, is passed or given away to another man or woman. You don't take your riches with you to the spirit world. What we take as riches with us to the spirit world is our works in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. Which are true riches. The knowledge, wisdom and understanding. And the scriptures say the knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of that time. So we need to understand this in order for us and our minds and spirit to be stable. You know, even now, you know, before the great and dreadful day of the Lord come, you know, because we have to be prepared to be ready to fight the battle. All right. The war in our own minds against ourselves. All right. Elder Apostle Gabar say from time to time, the big your biggest enemy is yourself. You trick yourself. All right. Out of your own salvation, so to say. All right. We know that. Salvation is given to his elect, so the elect can't be tricked. You know, Yahweh Shai said, Neither could you pluck them out of my hands. All right, so you know, hopefully, I hope this lesson was edifying. I wanted to keep it focused on the word vanity, and um, well, willing, I hope you're edified. So, with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.